Well, uh, so one of the reasons I chose rheumatology was not only the zebras, but I, I thought that during my career, we'd make some inroads uh, in rheumatology because you have to remember back in the 80s, we were treating people with injectable, injectable gold salts, steroids, and pen penicillin, I mean, all of which were very toxic, and other than the steroids, the other, others didn't work very well. We didn't know anything about pathogenesis of any of the diseases, so I thought that during my career, there'd be an opportunity for discovery. When I thought more about the rheumatic diseases, however, I also realized that in order to study disease, you've got to understand the fundamental ways the, the normal system works, and we knew nothing. We knew al almost none of the molecules in the immune system had been cloned at that point or definitively identified. And so I thought that I was going to take a, a pretty basic approach uh, towards understanding how T cells got activated. And the reason for focusing on T cells is they had been implicated in rheumatoid arthritis and so many other diseases. And uh, basically, I focused on how the T cell receptor signaled, and I never uh, departed very far away from that, even now. Um, so I think the high point of my career is really understanding the molecular mechanisms by which the T cell receptor signals. And what I think we know now is the molecules involved and who's ta communicating to who. I don't think we know the detailed molecular uh, regulatory mechanisms and how thresholds are, are set and that sort of thing. So I'd still like, there's still a lot to learn. Um, and uh, so I, I think my greatest achievement is uh, the work I did uh, to help figure out how the T cell receptor communicated with cytoplasmic tyrosine kinases, which were regulated by tyrosine phosphatases. In particular, I'm probably best known, and I think one of the greatest accomplishments is identifying an enzyme called ZAP70. Uh, this was identified by Andy Chan, a postdoc who was then a postdoctoral fellow in the lab. He's now a head of uh, research at Genentech, head of basic research at Genentech. And um, we still work on ZAP70. So I think most people would acknowledge that ZAP70 is a great therapeutic target. Uh, there's an immunodeficiency syndrome due to ZAP70 mutations. So that sort of validates that it's very important. Um, we recently solved the structure of ZAP70. Uh, we've also made an experimental model system in which we can inhibit ZAP70. And we've shown, in, so we can show that inhibitors, if we had good inhibitors to ZAP70, would pretty much turn off most T cell functions. And so that would be useful in most autoimmune diseases and then transplantation. So um, we have a nice experimental model that we're using to do academic research. But um, three years ago, we got a, a grant through the Obama stimulus package to the NIH in which we were able to actually screen for inhibitors uh, to ZAP70, taking an approach that hadn't yet been taken by Big Pharma, uh, looking for allosteric inhibitors, inhibitors that uh, will uh, block the ability of the enzyme to change shape. Um, and we know that it does so when it binds to the T cell receptor, so we want to prevent it from changing shape uh, and uh, prevent it from being activated. So we did a small molecule screen, which we wouldn't have been able to do with our regular, uh, with our normal funding, but the stimulus package enabled this. And so together with a colleague at Berkeley, John Curian, we did a screen, screened 150,000 compounds and came up with a small panel of hits. And uh, about a month ago, we started a small biotech company uh, uh, and one of its major goals will be to uh, develop real inhibitors to ZAP70. So I think the work I've done on ZAP70 is uh, probably uh, the most important work of my career, uh, but it interfaces with other work that 
relates to uh, how the T-cell receptor signals.